This is the final video for our platter class. We're going to just talk about some alternative decorating techniques that we maybe haven't talked about yet. This is the exact same platter pattern that we've been using. So it's the form that I cut out in the very first video with a piece of string. And I have a little bit of slip on the bottom, colored slip. And this is my final chance to shape the top. So if I wanted to go in and lift the sides up a little bit more, it's still leather hard and I can shape it. I would go in with a red rubber rib to do that. And I do, I do tend to lift my sides up a little bit more than I want them to because they can slump down a little bit in the firing. So I make sure that the sides have the angle that I want and everything's as smooth as I want it. And this particular video, we're gonna talk a little bit about slip. And there's pros and cons to slip. Slip is just colored clay, and so it goes on a little bit thicker. A benefit is it can go anywhere. It can go all over the bottom because it's clay. And so this one, I've already got some white slip on the bottom. And it's nice with the thickness. Um, it gives you some nice painterly brush strokes, or you can use uh, trips, uh, slip trailers to apply it. I'm just going to apply some white and a little bit of Robin's egg blue and I have white on the bottom and that's why I wasn't particularly careful with um, the sides here because I knew I was going to put some white on the top. But I want to just go with really loose brush strokes and it's going to leave that texture. So again, following the, the rule of thirds, I want, I'm going to leave about one third in this uh, different color, Robin's egg blue. And then I'm just going to put some of this loose white on the other two thirds. And this is gonna be layered. There's gonna be lots going on on top of this too. So this is just kind of a base layer. It's gonna add some interest underneath. And it's gonna, basically with the texture, what you see is what you get. It's gonna shrink up a little bit, but those little, any raised elements are gonna stay raised. Now I'm gonna come in and splatter just a little bit. I don't wanna overdo it. Um, but a little bit of the white on the blue side and then a little bit of the blue on the white side. And it's just a little bit of extra texture and a little bit of extra interest. Our slip is now dried, so we're going to talk about the next layer with our platter. We've been talking a little bit about some commercial products and another commercial product is stencils. You can get all kinds of stencils at the craft stores and online, or you can make your own. But rather than using them straight out of the box, it's nicer to make them your own, to develop your own voice and aesthetic. We could use something like this in combination with the sponge technique from the other platter video, where we take a lid and spread out some underglaze or slip, and then come in with a sponge and add some color to the template. Um, in this particular case, what I'm doing is I'm using it to cut out some circles and I'm going to make them into that bubble pattern from our earlier platter. With this technique, I want to preserve the areas that I like. So I'm looking at those painterly brush strokes and kind of the random happy accidents of the slip splatters and then figuring out what areas I like I want to save, I don't want to cover up, and areas that need something added to them, I'm adding some um, marks for some bubbles that I'm going to add. And um, for the bubbles, I'm going in over with some underglaze. And to, to mark, I'm using, this is a stylus. It's like a needle tool with a ball on the end. Um, you can use anything you want, really. But I'm just uh, going in and marking off some lines where I want my my bubbles. I started with my biggest shape. So the, the focal point will, again, kind of be at that one third mark. So I've got the biggest bubble. And then I've got an odd number of the next size bubble. And now I'm coming down into smaller bubble sizes and um, making kind of that bubbly pattern. There's my bubble outlines. And I'm using a dry brush to get rid of the clay crumbs here before I add some underglaze. And I'm coming in with a few different colors here while the underglaze is still wet. 
And again, this is Velvet Almaco Underglaze and just a series of some bl like blues greens and I'll come in with a touch of white at the end, but I want to blend these in while it's still wet. I have my bubbles on top of that slip. Now I'm just going to add a really light splattering of some of the colors that I used um, for the bubbles to, again, kind of keep it cohesive, but I don't want to overkill. I really like what I have going on now, so I'm going to be really gentle and targeted with just a couple little spots. So I'm just using a toothbrush, dipping it in a little bit, and if there's an area I like that I want to preserve, I'm going to cover it with my hand and just get a little targeted sprinkling on there, and then we'll call this one good. You've learned a lot of techniques to apply to leather hard clay, so let's look back at a few of those. You can take your clay, and if you have the same clay body that shrinks the same amount, you can take two different colors of clay and roll the two wet clays together, so you can get designs by just using two different colored clay. You can paint on underglaze at leather hard or bone dry. And then this particular one, you can carve in to make some decorative patterns. So to make this consistent polka dot bubble pattern, we've got some carving in the foot. It also lightens it up a little bit. This one has been fully fired now. You can see that gloss on here. The reason that these oval platters are about the size they are is that I know that once these have been bisque fired and I'm ready to dip it in the clear glaze, this shape will fit in a five gallon bucket. And most of our glazes, and certainly the big clear bucket, is a five gallon bucket. So this particular pattern is handy for that. So when it is, after it's bisque fired, you can dip it halfway in, pull it out, let it dry, turn it around, hold the dry end, and dip it in the clear. So this one has the um, clear applied. And then I don't know if it shows up very well in the video, but I did splatter a little bit of blue-green gloss just to give some shadow bubbles here too. And then on these two, the techniques that you learned are using the slip again, but using it in a quick, loose, painterly fashion to show off the, the brush strokes. And then we've layered that underglaze technique on top using some commercial stencils to um, draw the outline here, but breaking the stencils up and using them in our own way, not, not just the manufacturer's way. This one also does have some decorations on the bottom to match. So we've got a signature and some bubbles on the bottom. So it's one cohesive piece. And then we've got our crazy explosion of techniques here. Definitely crammed too many techniques into one platter here, but I wanted to show you um, lots of different techniques on this one. So just a look back, we've got our red clay. We've got some layers of white slip, again, loosely covering it um, to add some interesting texture. And then we used wax resist on this, layered different colors of underglaze, more wax resist, and then we were able to carve through because the wax resist, unlike the paper relief that we've used in other lessons, you can see where it's at and use it to carve through. So we've got some carving on this one. And again, it's got some matching decorations on the bottom. This one is way too crazy for um, my own personal taste. So I'll probably, instead of dipping it straight and clear, use one of our translucent glazes, but something that has a little bit of color to tone it down a little bit. So I may end up dipping this one in the blue ice or salad on sage, something like that after it's bisque fired. So we'll see if we can tone this one down a little bit. Anyway, thanks for joining in all of these platter lessons and decorating lessons. And I hope you take the time to test out all these techniques and decide which techniques are both fun for you and create patterns and designs that you enjoy.